Hey everybody, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and this is hands down the best way to duplicate objects around a circle in Adobe Illustrator. I'm not kidding. You're gonna want to subscribe after this. Yeah. Now let me introduce to y'all the one son of a musician refused to fall. That intro was a lot to live up to, but I can do it. Here we go. Let's start a new document and make it 1920 by 1080. All the rest of this just leave as default. Create. Here we go. All right, so let's pretend that we have a circle that we want to duplicate objects around. You don't have to have the circle path if you don't want to, but a lot of people probably will. So I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool and then hold shift while I draw a circle on my artboard. Now I'm gonna switch over to the selection tool and then I'll just give this a no fill and we'll have a little bit of a stroke on it, just one pixel stroke. I'm gonna zoom in here. Uh, for this tutorial. All right, so this is seriously, it's the best way. Watch this whole thing. You guys are gonna see so much and make sure you pay attention to the end where uh, we expand everything because that's how you finalize your uh, shapes and stuff. All right, here we go. So what I wanna do is let's say I want to, um, here, I'm gonna create with the polygon tool. I'm just gonna click on my canvas and select a polygon, 50 pixels is fine. We'll make it three sides. We're gonna create a triangle, hit okay. There's our triangle. All right, let's give that some kind of a color that you guys can see. How about a hot pink? Yeah, that's a nice one. All right, uh, and then no stroke on that. So we just have this triangle shape, right? And let's say we wanna take this triangle shape and we wanna duplicate it around this circle, just like every other tutorial out there, right? This one's different, trust me. All right, what we need to do is create a smaller circle. So I'm gonna grab that ellipse tool again, and then I'm just gonna hold shift and create this little itty bitty circle down here. All right, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in so we can we can uh, actually see this guy. All right, so we got a tiny little circle down here. I'm gonna make sure he's a different color than my shape so that I can uh, point him out and see him very easily. Uh, next thing I want you guys to do, if you haven't already, is go to the view drop down and turn on smart guides. This will make this a heck of a lot easier to line up. Uh, Command U on a Mac. Take this circle and you see all these pink lines showing up. Those are the smart guides. I'm gonna line him up to the very bottom of the triangle and the very center of the triangle. I wanna make sure he intersects right there. Perfect, all right. We're gonna leave him there for now. I'm gonna grab both of these and group them together. Right clip, right click and then group. So now I have this group, this uh, triangle or whatever shape. It could even be an image, uh, like a bitmap image. Um, but I've got this shape and then I've got this circle. Here's where the magic starts to happen. I'm gonna click on this group, go up to effect. And it's very important that those two are grouped together or else this effect will apply to each of them individually instead of the group as a whole. So make sure those are grouped together and then go to distort and transform, transform. This is the panel you're going to love. All right, we've got all these different things. I'm gonna ignore the scale, I'm gonna ignore the move, right? Make sure that's 100%, 100%, zero pixel, zero pixel. For now, I'm gonna ignore the angle, zero degrees, uh, and then just keep what I have checked here. One important thing here is this is the reference point that we're going to rotate around. Make sure you click the very bottom. That'll change where we rotate from the middle of our group to the very bottom center of our group. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check mark preview so we can preview this. Uh, and a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, you can preview it? That's awesome. It gets even better. So let's say we want, uh, who knows? I, I don't know. I want 15 copies or I want 15 shapes around my circle, right? I'm gonna type in 15 here. If you ever want to uh, commit a number in any of these dialog boxes without accidentally hitting OK, just hit the tab button. All right, so I'm gonna hit tab. Nothing happens because we haven't actually rotated it yet. So here's the super cool part. This is the part that uh, all you people who don't like to do math, this is the easy part, right? 360 degrees in a, a circle. So most of the tutorials, you actually have to do the math yourself. Just type in 360 divided by, use the little uh, slash symbol, 15, and then hit tab. It does the calculation for you, 24 degrees. Um, if I wanted 17 shapes, I could do 360 divided by 17. Boom, 21.18 degrees, and it's perfect. It lines it up perfect. Obviously, it rotates around this tiny circle. It doesn't look like what we want it yet. 
but just hang on. Last but not least, remember that this is copies. So if I want 17 shapes without having a duplicate shape on top of my original, I want to subtract one from this. Only 16 copies plus one, my original. So I'm gonna have 16 copies. It's gonna be at this 21, this weird angle that we did really easily. Um, and that's it, hit okay, cool. We're done, right? No, because we wanna put them around this circle, not these little circles. And what did this do? Why, why do I only have one group? Let me talk you through this. All right, so you have this group, this original group, and you transformed around using an effect. So it's previewing that effect still. Now I could go up to object, expand appearance, but I don't wanna do that yet. Here's the super, super duper cool part. Take this uh, group and I can move it around, everything moves around and line him up so that the bottom of the circle lines up with the center of the circle we want to transform around. And I'm gonna let go right there. So he's in the center and he's rotated around, you know, the very center point. Because this is a group, I can double click into it. Now I'm in isolation mode of the group and I can actually click on each of the objects separately. Super cool part, are you ready? Click and drag and hold shift on that triangle up to the top of our circle and let go. Ho oh, ho, look at that. It actually adjusts our copies. Every other copy adjusts. I could, I could click and drag that out even more. Super cool, super editable, and we aren't done yet. I can actually still click into this group and go to the appearance panel. If you don't see it over here to the right, go to window appearance, it'll pop out. And in this appearance panel, we still have that transform, transform effect applied to that group. So not only can I double click in and edit the individual triangles and then which then edits all of them out there, I can actually go in and edit the transform. So let's say uh, this was like too many triangles, right? They're too close to each other. I'm gonna do maybe uh, 10 triangles. So up here, I'm gonna do 360 divided by 10, hit tab. That's 36 degrees, hit preview, and I can see how many triangles that is already. I want 10 shapes, so that's nine copies plus the original. I'm gonna make that nine before I exit out. I'm gonna hit okay, and now I have 10 shapes around here. Wanna see something even cooler? Double click back into that. Let's say I don't like the shape of this triangle. I can actually use my direct selection tool, grab a point on it, oops, grab a point here, and just edit that point. Click, shift, drag it up, boom. I can actually edit. It's editable, the whole thing is editable. This is super, super awesome. There's like no guessing with this, right? One more thing before I show you how to finalize uh, your design. I can double click into this with the, uh, with the selection tool, the regular selection tool, right? So I got this group, can double click into it. I can move this around. Look what else I can do. What if I grab the ellipse tool and create another circle? Watch what happens. We can create multiple objects within the same transformation that are duplicated around the circle. Now be careful with this, it needs to be directly centered on that, and then I can move that in and out just like any other object, and that's you know that works with that transformation perfectly, but be careful, if it's off center even a little bit, it will affect the entire transformation. Notice how like everything's sort of moving and shifting all sorts of weird ways because one of my objects is off that center mark. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are exactly aligned in the center of each other, all the way up, and they will provide a perfect uh, duplication around that circle. So you, could add, you can add multiple, multiple shapes. So cool. This is like, uh, I don't know, this is above and beyond any other method that I know of. That's why this is the best method. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these two circles. I'm gonna show you guys how to finalize this, this whole group. Right now we have a tr we have an, an effect, um, so I can't even I can't click on any of these because they're really just these like preview things that are showing up. So what I need to do is grab this group, go up to object, expand appearance. It expands all of them so that now that they are, now they are all actual shapes, not just they don't just appear there. They're they're real shapes that you can go in and and uh, transform and, and do things to. They're all grouped together. So what I want to do is right click on that group hit ungroup and now I have all these little separate groups of that original group we created which isn't the most helpful of things but all you need to do is select everything hold shift and click on that circle I don't want that circle selected so now I have all these selected these individual groups I can right click on them again and hit ungroup one more time 
And now I have all these individual elements and pieces that I can uh, move around and change. Select those, make sure you don't have that circle selected. So you can un unselect that circle with shift and then I can delete those out. All my guide circles are gone now. <laughs> That's it, you guys. Uh, there's so many awesome things that you can layer on top of each other inside of this effect. You can apply effects to the objects inside of the effect and then expand it all. It's, it's really cool. Um, there's a lot of awesome things you can do with this. I think this is hands down the best way to duplicate objects around a circle. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, or if you disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Like this video if it helped you, and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.